In this video, I'm going to be sharing three things that I loved about this resort and 10 issues. Yes, that's right. 10 issues that we had so that you can make your decision on if you think that this affordable, all-inclusive luxury resort in Cancun, Mexico is worth it or not. Plus, I'm going to throw in a little room tour so you can see what the rooms look like. For this trip, we had the kids in tow and my parents as well. After a gate change and a short delay, we made the quick flight into Cancun and headed to the resort. Okay, so first things first, here are the things that I love about this resort. Number one, it's family friendly. The Ziva brand with Hyatt is their family friendly, all inclusive, whereas the Hyatt Zalara is their adults only, all inclusive. There's two Zivas in Cancun. One of them is up in the hotel zone, and that's where the adults-only Hyatt Zalara is. The other one is this one, which is the Riviera Maya um, Ziva brand, and it's definitely more affordable. This resort had some great amenities for an all-inclusive. Had nightly entertainment, all your foods included, had the entertainment team that came around and uh, did stuff at the pools during the day, which was great, and they actually had like a mechanical bowl out one day, which was awesome. Your drinks are included. There's a small water park. There's a small candy shop. Well... Mm, kinda, but they do have ice cream over at the coffee shop. That's great. Um, multiple pools, multiple restaurants. They have a spa. There's a workout and weight room. Basically everything that you would want and expect from an all-inclusive. Number two, it's wallet friendly. Well, kinda. I'm going to get to that a little bit later. Yeah, it's a budget all-inclusive and you can get your room booked online for pretty cheap upfront price, but there are definitely some things that you need to know and watch out for. And there's a very frustrating part of it that I'm going to mention later in issue number five, so stick around for that. Number three, it's centrally located. Quick and easy to get to from the airport, which is great, and there's always something to do close by. The location of the resort allows for some very good excursion options. This is a big pro, and the excursion part of the trip probably saved the family vacation for me. We're gonna look at that at the end of this video, and you're not gonna wanna miss it. Quick rule about excursions and all-inclusives that I like to follow. We like to do little three-day, two-night trips just because they're quick and easy. Um, typically, that's just going to be with my wife and I. Um, but if your stay is only two to three days, the rule I like to follow is we we pretty much stay on resort. You paid for your all-inclusive and it just makes sense to stay there and take advantage of all that. But anything longer than three days is probably going to need an excursion. So that's just a little rule of thumb that I go by. All right. Now, Real quick before we jump into the issues, ugh, let's look, have a quick look at the rooms. Just a heads up, we like to show the rooms lived in so you can get a uh, get a look at you know functionality or 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 basically we just forget to film them when we get there. So e either way, um, first room was third floor and it's a king oceanfront room category. All right, here we go at Hyatt Ziva Riviera Cancun. Gonna film the room real quick. It's 1303. <laughs> Pretty good room. We have, uh, we got our floats. A tub. Shower. The shower, you can see the slope here. Um, it's probably one of the only showers that I've ever felt like I was going to slip. Toilet. You know, sinks. Closets here. Big closets, sliding door. Woo. Of course, we like to show it lived in. Um, you know, be able to say how it is. We have the ocean front is building one. Uh, beach, man, the beach, but nice little bed over here. Um, this uh, this little table actually goes over there, but we're here with kids. Woohoo! Um, so pretty, pretty good room. Lots of space right here. I have snacks in here. A little mini fridge right there. Um, coffee. So. It's a pretty good room. Woo! We did have multiple rooms and the next room was on the fourth floor and is a double ocean front. Also, just quick note, they did have elevators, but they were tiny, tiny, and there was no AC, so they got super hot. 
All right, back to the resort. And again, here's the struggle. You're on vacation, so you don't want to complain. But honestly, we almost had to argue that excuse right there. It's like, hey, we're on vacation. But we, we had to argue that to try to stay positive and not complain. So probably not a good thing. Here are some of the issues we had. Issue number one, where are we going? All right, so this one is kind of like the overall feel. And for those of y'all who have been to Cancun and headed south down to the Riviera Maya or Playa del Carmen, you've probably seen the big fancy gates that are the resort entrances that take you to the resorts. And Hayaziva does not have that. Their gate is underwhelming to say the most, right? And seriously, this is a minor thing. However, I, you know, what's the saying? First impressions last a lifetime and uh, <laughs> their gate needs, uh, needs some love. All right, issue number two. So we pull up, get ushered in the lobby to the Hyatt check-in room and it's a little separate room, which is nice and the AC was great. One of the perks of the Hyatt loyalty program is their private check-in rooms that they'll do. They'll do like a little separate private check-in for you. And in the past, we've stayed at Marriott's and Hilton's, uh, but we've recently added Hyatt to the points game. The private check-in room is a nice touch, but at check-in, there was three things that bugged me. Number one, they didn't have our guaranteed connecting rooms. Number two, they slow played me, so check-in took a really long time. And number three, they overcharged my credit card for a full room. It's just a big mess, so not off to a great start. One thing I will note that we did that kind of came through and worked smoothly was that we reserved one of the bally beds by the pool in advance. Um, this was separate from the reservation. Um, I had read that getting pool chairs was kind of tough sometimes, and we, we really wanted a home base anyways. So we reserved cabana number 31 at the main pool in advance before we got to the resort. And this process for booking that was super easy. Uh, we went online, I emailed the concierge, uh, step number two was I picked the cabana number. Step number three, they sent over some paperwork. I signed it up and boom, we were all set. This proved to be just awesome and really important because the dreaded issue number five that's coming up here in a minute. All right, on to issue number three, maintenance. And maybe it's just me, but I just really don't want to deal with their room maintenance on vacation. Staff did a great job fixing it, but again, I just don't want to deal with those maintenance issues, especially something as important as just the hotel room door, like being able to lock. Issue number four, if you're looking for an amazing beach, this is not the place to come. Look, the beach was kept up as well as it could be. Uh, it's just not a good beach. Um, there's plenty of places in R Riviera Maya that are like this, where it's just not that amazing crystal clear blue water of the Cancun hotel zone. So again, if you're looking for that blue water, don't go to this, this place for the beach. All right, here we go. Issue number five. Get ready for this one because this one for me is kind of the single most annoying one uh, when you're in an all-inclusive and especially as we're kind of comparing it and talking about this being a budget all-inclusive. The word that encapsulates all of this is that upsell. Everything at this resort is an upsell and it's kind of like, wait, not everything's included? Uh, nope. My personal opinion is that all-inclusives are best when they are actually all-inclusive. All right, let's go rapid fire on the last five issues. Issue number six, the food. Look, the food's not good. It's just, it just wasn't really good. The buffet was almost outright bad. The only bright spots, and for me, like, and I, I seriously mean like the only bright spots was uh, the hibachi and the habaneros tacos. The habaneros is beachfront, and it was just their food was, those tacos were actually really, really good. Um, I'd rate those like five out of five. Uh, but everything else I'd rate it like two out of five stars. And the only reason I'm not giving it a one is because no one in the family got sick. Issue number seven, the water park. The water slides, they had lanes closed and it's small anyway. So there's only a few slides and it's just, it's just not that good. Even going down the slide, you often got stopped halfway down and had to like paddle and push your way to get to the water. Issue number eight, the summer heat. And look, this isn't their fault, but it was hot and everybody in Cancun had to deal with it. But their main pool was almost unbearable in the afternoons. It was literally hotter than a hot tub. 
And so a quick pro tip, the pool between seven and eight is much, much cooler. Also, one of the things that we did is we gotten this little fan off of Amazon and it is just a game changer. Their entertainment at night is outside and my wife and my three-year-old, they seriously needed it, but I was able to basically have that fan and point it at them and they were able to enjoy the show and it's just a game changer. Issue number nine, late checkout. You know, on late checkout, when your room keys don't work and you're just locked out and you've got to go up and get new keys. It just becomes frustrating. And then so issue number 10 is the, you know, it's got an open air lobby, which is beautiful and awesome. But after you do check out and there's no more air conditioning, they, there's really limited uh, spaces where you can go for air conditioning and just waiting on the airport shuttle and everything. Um, you know, we, the family just got hot and sweaty. So uh, look, overall, it's a lot of issues. I mean, but the, the one saving grace is that because it's budget up front and it allowed us to save a little bit of money, it, it allowed us to put that towards an excursion. And we chose to do a catamaran sailing with the family over to Isla Mujeres. I uh, wanted to take them over there and have them to get a look at that and play a Norte. And Honestly, again, this saved the vacation for me. And so maybe the strategy is to book the basic budget stay and then allocate that money towards an excur excursion and get to go out and see what Cancun offers. I mean, sounds like a good plan to me. Um, but I think, I think, again, what you have to kind of balance out is you don't want to pay a ton for an all-inclusive and then, you know, leave the resort because you've kind of already put your money in for, you know, their food and their drinks and all that stuff. So again, a little bit of a balancing act, but this, this trip uh, with the kids and getting them to go snorkeling and all that was just perfect. But check out our next video to see how you can save hundreds of dollars on booking an excursion like this. Hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that it helps you travel better. And look, all issues aside, I'd say it's it's a fairly decent budget all-inclusive resort, but comment below and let me know what you think and don't forget to subscribe.